law forms the philosophical foundation on which we as a society operate. And ultimately it represents what's fair. Without laws, I don't think we humans really are capable of living together. We might be able to live as families and not have laws, but once we have become an urban world, which we've all become, we need laws to regulate how we interact with each other, and that is how I like to think of law. If we start to realize that law affects everything we do, then we're more cognizant, we're more aware. We go through life more intelligently. When we were conceptualizing this project on legal literacy, what we wanted to do was try to narrow it down so that there would be a clear focus. We needed to be more specific if we're working in schools. And we kept coming back to the two big ideas that we felt were really fundamental. Rule of law, the fact that in our democratic society, everyone has to operate within the rule of law. The second principle was the notion of a just society of young people feeling like they can contribute to a just society. So it seemed very natural uh, to gravitate towards citizenship, identity, human rights, and environmental sustainability. Because what we were trying to do is get away from exactly the kind of notion that we've been talking about, that law is just a, a body of rules, which is your responsibility to obey. By broadening to things like identity and to human rights, what we're trying to use those for is to show student, teachers, and mostly students, these are elements of law that really do affect you. Why, I remember like it was yesterday. He was like a baby then. There were things I couldn't teach my son, things he'd have to learn from others, like living in a world with other people, respecting their rights, and assuming the responsibility of regular duties. But what I wanted most was that he'd grow up to be a good citizen. Most people do feel that way. I know. The parents entrust the school system with their children to teach them what's really important. And if you ask parents what's really important, it's interesting. What they think is important is those citizenship values. Yet somehow we, we stress the other. And we really have to really revisit what's going on in the schools. And that particularly has to do with this enormous pressure for assessment and for measurable outcomes and for making sure that students have continuous progress on a certain set of learning outcomes. Um, it creates a very tight uh, learning environment and teaching environment that makes it more and more difficult for teachers to bring in the teachable moments and take advantage of those. Kent, imagine what things would be like if we had no law. Then we would have no officers to enforce the law and no courts to interpret the law. Now imagine a quiet evening at home when... One of the issues that I think we have in our society is that when people think of law, they often think of people being charged with crimes, or maybe people getting divorced, but beyond that, people don't necessarily look at the regulation of how credit cards are used, or how mortgages operate, or how land gets transferred if you buy a house. And law governs all of those things. Well, that's part of the problem when you want to introduce law education into the schools. You probably shouldn't call it law, because there is that sense that, that law is the police, the courts, the judges, 
that law isn't what affects us every day, or it isn't about these big ideas of law's relationship to society and democracy. I see the kind of law education we want to teach in schools as being in three areas. Conceptual law, the idea that the whole democracy is shaped by the rule of law, these big ideas of law's role in society. Secondly, it's that law is practical. Law actually affects every single thing every person does every day, everything. And then I think the third area that we try to teach in, in law education is the idea of participation. We have to play a role in shaping the kind of society that we want, and law is a tool to do that. Burnaby Mountain is part of the Legal Literacy Cells Project, and we have taken on the component of sustainability, which is one of the four legs of the Legal Literacy Project. We have called this law from the ground up, and in doing that, we have created an urban farming project that is part of our model for healthy schools. When we first started this and we wanted to start to grow vegetables, we couldn't. It was we're not allowed to grow vegetables because of something could be in the soil or the food and it was a liability for students to consume food that they had grown. It, it begins for them to look at policy and policy making and decision making and what does that really mean and what does that imply? Who makes the laws? Why are those laws in place? And it's beginning to invite them to look at what is true citizenship. We go to the home at classes, we give it to them and so we are able to sell the salad to the students so they can be uh, healthy. And then the composting became part of it and how can we reduce by composting but then how can we also create organic because one of the laws now passed in the city of Burnaby is no pesticides or herbicides can be used chemically. Well we have a worm fertilizer and we have a, a compost over there and we've got worm juice that comes out and when we dilute it and we water the plants um, it, it acts as a really great natural fertilizer. Yay my garden will actually grow now! <laughs> The marketing class took on looking at green business and within that to look at this whole discussion as a business, how would we market it effectively, how would we begin to make the word spread throughout the school. The home ec teachers looked at all of the recycling and, and plastic materials in the school, how could we bring that awareness and so they thought they'd put together a fashion show using only recycled materials. In building community with these kids, it's inviting them to look at citizenship because they, as citizens, are working on these projects and they're beginning to ask questions. So at a real practical level, it's really important that young people learn about how the law can impact them and it really does impact everything that we do. Most of the time it's in the background. It's like good health. If you're healthy, you don't think about it. If the laws are working well, you don't think about it. But when things don't work well, you need to know what's gone wrong and what can be done about it in a civil manner that is not resorting to violence. We hope in Canada, I think as citizens, that most of the time our laws are just. But history has told us that it's not always going to be that way and we should look critically at our laws to make sure that they do tend to operate for the betterment of most people most of the time. So as our, our society evolves, we're constantly changing our laws. The decriminalization of homosexuality in 1969 with Trudeau's you know, famous statement, uh, the state has, has no business in the bedrooms of our, of our citizens. As our society evolves and grows, laws change. That's one of the more critical functions of, of a democracy. It raises the whole question, for example, of civil disobedience and what the role of civil disobedience is. Well, you know, it takes a pretty comprehensive understanding of the function of law to be able to make a case for civil disobedience, even though that's a long tradition in, uh, in democratic societies and uh, can be shown to have been instrumental in, in significant and important changes in laws. There was a time in this country when it was unlawful for women to vote, when they asked if the word persons in the British North America Act included female persons. That was a challenge of the law in order to push for gender equity and, and the right to vote and the right to participate in political life. Understanding how those normalized ideologies resulted in certain laws, I think is really important to understanding the history of Canadian society. You know, one of the more um, uh, 
discouraging public events that I've witnessed many times is people's judgment on civil disobedience is that it's breaking the law. You can't do that. You know, without, without really understanding the sorts of moral issues and moral judgments that, that you have to make to come to that kind of a conclusion. Just understanding that alone is a huge piece of legal literacy. Yes, as I gaze upon this great historic assembly, this unprecedented gathering of young people, I cannot help thinking that a hundred years from now, the historians will be calling this not the beat generation, but the generation of integration. I think law-related education can play a key role in helping uh, citizens feel that they have some power or efficacy uh, in their society. Uh, if young people are taught in our schools how uh, laws are made by governments, how they're enforced, and how they can be challenged if they think that they don't operate fairly, then we empower young people. I think all Canadians recognize uh, that people participating in our communities, whether that be a small town or at the national level, uh, is the key. My name is Jennifer Byrne. I teach currently a grade six, seven. I try to teach with a global education theme, trying to create empathy and a sense of responsibility for the world that the kids are already citizens of. This school's goal is around social responsibility. And so it was really about introducing what are some of the rights they have as students and matching responsibilities that they have as students. You have certain rights as children. You have certain rights as members of this school. But with rights come responsibilities. It's not just, oh, there's a global issue. It's really kind of scary if nothing happens. You actually have to now take a role the smaller lessons of introducing rights and responsibility will hopefully help lead the kids to the larger picture of human rights. And so I think it takes time and knowledge about the subject itself in order to give class time to those subject areas around the law, justice, human rights. Well, certainly if you look at the Ministry of Education documents, those kinds of greater purposes are built into the goals of education. It's there, but somehow teachers and people working in the system forget those big ideas. They get bogged down by the day by day, and I'm not being critical here, it's just that there's so many day by day pressures, we all get forced into a model that we don't necessarily believe in. It's the idea that you have to uh, prepare students for this exam that's coming up, which is probably just testing memory. It's not testing a lot of these big ideas because how can you test them? And so I suppose what, what this project is doing is saying, let's revisit that dialogue of what school should be about. The, the challenges a lot of teachers face are a curriculum which isn't particularly friendly. You have to be, I would say for example, a very motivated and probably somewhat experienced teacher to be able to read the existing curriculum and find the spaces in it, which is one of the things which we've tried to do, by the way, in the project find those spaces within the curriculum that teachers can work with to bring liter legal literacy into their classroom. And the other big challenge is getting around this perception now that there's some things that are important in school and other things that are less important. And, and all of that being driven by this assessment model that focuses on numeracy and literacy. In the, in the 1960s, curriculum for a, a given subject area was a few pages long. Teachers were empowered with the idea of interpreting those general guidelines and doing what was right for their classroom in their community. So we need to give teachers that opportunity to interpret curriculum rather than be too prescriptive. Now if you look at the curriculum, it's pages and pages and pages long. Why have we gone that route? We have a set curriculum in terms of points that need to be met, how we meet those points. We have some freedom within and more points are added every year. No curriculum really is ever taken out. So in grade six socials, the justice system is mentioned. However briefly, thumbnail sketch. I've taken classes to the law courts before, but that's really been my own initiative. And I'm meeting a very, very small part of the curriculum by doing that. But by the time you're taking to go through the process for real learning, now you've reduced your learning time for all those other things that you were mandated to teach. So how, is, how am I going to strike this balance of spending more time on things that weren't given high priority? In recent years, there's been a real push 
to incorporate sort of a business model into the schools. So education goes through spurts. So in the early 1900s, there was a lot of talk about the fact that education should serve a greater citizenship purpose. There was also the notion that education should help create the kind of society that we want. So education served a reconstruction purpose, an idea that you help cultivate the kind of young person that will go out and say, this is what's wrong with society, we want to change it. Whereas now I think we have the mentality that we want to graduate people that fit into the workplace. This is very common now that kids will be taking two sections of math every day and say to them, wait a minute, you know, one of those should be on social legal literacy, not just numerical literacy. I've worked in schools for many years and I've worked at curriculum development for many years, you know, worked from the perspective of trying to change curriculum at the top and I've also worked from the ground up in working with teachers to change their commitment to help shape the curriculum that way. I've become more and more convinced that the best way to go is working with teachers directly because they, they do have that control over their classroom and if they are committed uh, they can look at curricula and ministry guidelines and look at it from the lens, because everyone comes with their lens, look at it from the lens of what they're committed to and passionate about. And that's where SELS is coming in. We're working with these educators to try to uh, bring awareness to the educators and then they can work with the students. And it can be, sort of a, it can be actually a co-learning process. I'm here with the students that are taking my course. They were asked to participate in a mock trial. These educators had to perform the roles themselves. They played the roles of lawyers, they played the roles of witnesses, and they actually developed the questions themselves. And as a result of participating in the mock trial, they come to understand what's involved in the mock trial and more likely to do it with their students in the classroom. I think some people kind of might stay away from this type of uh, education because of the word law. And uh, you know, I don't think it should be something that, that scares them too, too much. And in that, if they could see that really what we're trying to do is bring up a lot of the social aspects of it, if they turn that into an environment that they could have a mock trial, what teaches the kids their rights and responsibilities and their roles in society, I think would be a great opportunity. And so the educators that were part of the course ranged from primary school teachers to secondary school teachers, uh, from all subject areas, all of whom are learning and have become committed to incorporating legal concepts and legal issues into their own classroom with students. And obviously, mock trial is a wonderful way to do it. Really, it promoted critical thinking skills. I found myself thinking about things that I never would have thought of before. It helps with communication. It helps with confidence, thinking on your feet. It's been a great opportunity. It's really made me see the value of teaching about rights and responsibilities and of teaching law and education. Prior to taking this course, I had difficulty seeing how I could do that, particularly in the elementary school. I am a firm believer now that it needs to be integrated in the curriculum across the grade levels. And so one area that I think is ripe for expansion in terms of the public being educated about law is to help everyone understand all of the different ways in which the law affects their lives and is a part of the foundation on which they live their lives. The more that the public can understand how they all fit together, I think, the better off we'll be because often conflicts in our society result from people not understanding what the rules are. We don't have in our public education system enough attention on the issue of the rights and responsibilities that we have as citizens. Tommy Douglas, of course, is the great Canadian who spearheaded reforms that ultimately resulted in every Canadian having access to public health care. That is, in fact, development of law. What Tommy Douglas did was as a politician and as a government official, he, along with many other people he obviously worked with, saw the benefit of having public health care in the province that he was in and it ultimately spread across the country. He used laws to achieve that vision that he had. And the significance of that, I hope for young people, is this. If you have a dream, if you have a vision about what you would like to do as a young Canadian, you need to understand how you can use the law to achieve those things.
Yeah, I fought for freedom once, and now I'm going to work for it. I'm behind our schools from now on, and I'm backing education 100%. That's what I'm going to do. Now, what are you going to do?